If you're an entrepreneur or if you have an entrepreneurial mindset and you're all about your business, then this episode is for you. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur and a businessman, then you need to understand the importance of frameworks and systems. I will talk about frameworks and systems that your mind creates with the information you feed it and the experiences you have had in life can influence your decisions. We will discuss in detail how an entrepreneur may think and specifically we will discuss how Gary V made his business decision in regard to Uber. In business, you got to be open-minded. You got to be a yes man to get opportunities in life. You got to be open-minded. You got to be optimistic. You got to say yes to a lot of things. But over time, you learn to say no to certain opportunities, certain people, and certain business ideas. Because you start to learn and differentiate how to pick and choose, how to pre-qualify people, deals, and business opportunities. You build a system that would screen BS automatically in order to make better business decisions. As an entrepreneur and through the experiences I have had, I believe that Gary V is very optimistic about life, but not as optimistic and open-minded about business opportunities and when it comes to making business decisions. As an entrepreneur and through the experiences I've had, I believe that Gary V is very optimistic about life, but not as optimistic and open-minded about business opportunities and when it comes to money-making decisions. Chances are you are just like Gary V if you have the entrepreneurial mindset. Successful entrepreneurs and businessmen become less optimistic and open-minded over time about money and the business opportunities they say yes to or the type of people they work with. Gary V is selective in making business decisions when deciding how and what to invest in or who to partner with. He is cautious in his approach, just like every entrepreneur and businessman should be. As entrepreneurs, we make lots of mistakes early on, which we learn lessons for the hard way by making mistakes. We learn through bad decisions and a bunch of failures. We are open-minded about everything that comes our way and accept it all. We say yes to every opportunity because we are full of optimism. But once we go through a few bad patches and get backstabbed and get effed out of a few deals, we become more careful. We approach opportunities and people with more caution. Entrepreneurs are open-minded like Gary Vee. We are full of optimism about life, about everything else. But when it comes to certain deals, money, certain people, and certain type of businesses, we approach these opportunities with more caution after getting more experience. So when it comes to businesses, we are very careful and pessimistic, but not about life. We are very optimistic and open-minded. We are always learning new things. We want to see more people and meet more people. We want to innovate and create. We want to bring a change into this world. That can only be done if you are really optimistic. But when it comes to business and money, it is necessary for us to become close-minded. This is what I think happened with Gary V and the Uber situation when Gary's boy Travis came to him with Uber opportunity. Gary initially said F that because he pre-qualified Travis. And as entrepreneurs, we always pre-qualify people after we have had few years of experience. We see through bullshit. We know which conversations, which opportunities, meetings or waste of time or which ones are fruitful. All of Gary's gut feelings and instincts mustered up together to tell him to say no to the opportunity. Gary's instincts and experience and the systems he lives by got him to say no to Uber and Travis. Because maybe deep down Gary knew that Travis is a douche. Gary said in an interview that he did not believe that Travis and his co-founder Garrett could pull it off. And I honestly believe that deep down it was Gary's system and business processes, the frameworks that he has built over years and frameworks that he applies to conversations, meetings, business ideas, opportunities, money, buying shit at garage sales, got him to say no to the opportunity in the beginning. That's what you got to do. You have to learn to say no to certain ideas, certain people, money, opportunities, because they are not all the same. Gary initially said no when company was just an idea or had little traction. It was just an MVP, minimum viable product. Even though Gary invested in the company at a later stage, things could have been different at the start. Gary might have joined the board, become more hands-on and participate in whatever the F was going on in the company. That would have been really bad for Gary's image. No one talks about Travis anymore because he was doing shady shit at the company and got fired from over there. Travis is the type of entrepreneur who is a renegade. He does not play by the rules. He lived in the gray area. Every business has a gray area where you don't know what's right and what's wrong. And after a while, you cannot differentiate between legalities, what's legal and what's illegal. Once you start crossing those lines, there is no coming back. Travis was literally breaking rules and regulations of the oldest industry on the globe, the transportation industry. He was breaking rules all over the globe. He created one of the biggest loss leader business model and the largest ride sharing company in the history of innovation. 
His goal was to literally lose money. He just wanted to acquire customers and take over the market. And that's how Travis was able to grow the company much faster by raising insane amount of funds compared to its predecessor and competitor Lyft. Lyft has been around since 2007 but remained small and did not really grow rapidly like Uber did. Uber was founded in 2009. Uber literally challenged governments and broke laws across the globe. They would break city, state, country laws and then simply pay the fines to establish their services. I really want to break down Uber business model. But I will do that in another video. I was also in ride sharing industry. Back in 2013, I started a company which was similar to Uber and Lyft. So Gary has always been very good at spotting different type of trends or he's most of the times right about people or how they conduct their business. He must have spotted, trust me, like, you know, I grew up working in a convenience store and a dollar store at my family's businesses. And Gary did the similar thing. He was working for his family's businesses ever since he was a young kid. You see people, you meet people and you can learn about people and you know where they're headed. You can just see the patterns and trends and the trajectory of uh, people depending on their behavior. So he knew that Travis was a renegade. Gary did not initially invest in Uber because of Travis, I think. He did not want to be on the side of controversy. Gary did miss out on a huge business opportunity. But guess what? Gary is a straight up guy. He has rules and regulations and ways of doing things. He is boys with Travis and respects him as an entrepreneur because they can just talk to each other, bounce ideas, discuss strategies, talk shit for days without any judgment. But they never have to risk going into business together, risk their friendship. As an entrepreneur, after a while, you learn to say no to certain type of people, certain type of opportunities, certain type of money. Not all opportunities are the same. Not all money is the same. Everyone should work like this. Once you learn and gain knowledge, up your skills, practice and become familiar with different processes, you start to see patterns and start to create your own systems, your processes, your frameworks that you can apply to literally anything in life. Entrepreneurs build certain frameworks over time. It's basically a system that has guidelines of doing certain things. It's a repeatable process. You lay out your strategies and process that you can apply and utilize in your business or life. How you approach people, how you approach business, how you complete certain tasks. For example, if you want to hire someone, you will know exactly what type of person you want to work with. You know the reasons and qualities. If you want to fire someone, you will have the exact reasons for firing someone. You want to date somebody, you want to marry someone, you want someone to babysit your kids, you want to eat healthy and be healthy, there's a system for it. You like to look a certain way, there's a certain haircut you get, and there's only one barber that could give you that haircut. You already know what type of people you want around you. You're very clear cut in your demands and asks and in your thought process. You already know what you want. This is because you have visualized and imagined certain qualities in the things you're looking for. And by the way, when you first come up with a business idea, you need to figure out who is going to be your customer, who is going to buy your products. You need to imagine and visualize, figure out exact attributes of your customers. So you have to do something known as creating an avatar of a potential customer. Just like when we go on social media, every company wants us to choose an avatar, like in Snapchat. Or simply, if we are playing a video game, we usually have a person in the game that we either create or choose certain character with certain qualities and attributes. Or when you fill out Tinder or go on Facebook and write information about yourself, you make a resume, you go on LinkedIn. Basically, you are filling out information and creating an avatar that you want to present to the world. World. Hey, I'm an entrepreneur. I have great work ethic. I have founded multiple companies. I'm a killer salesman and a marketer. I have 20 years of experience in this and 30 years of experience in that. So basically, you have created an avatar that you present in front of people. You also have to create an avatar about your company, about your service, about your product, what type of customers your company deals with. For example, as a company, I want to make sure that I can provide services to a certain subset of the population, a certain demographics. My ideal customer would be over 25, under 55. My customers could be either male or females or both. They have certain income level. Their income is above 50,000, they live in certain areas and they are interested in certain things. And anyone under 25 is not my customer, it's not my audience that I want to serve because they are probably not making enough money to buy my $1,000 course or a $1,000 product. You're only looking for a certain type of people. 
with certain attributes, you describe the perfect customer that will actually buy your product. So you really have to niche down and come up with an avatar of your ideal paying customer. You describe the person that you want to do business with because of the systems and the frameworks you have, the type of people you do business with, the type of people you see on the regular basis, type of person you want to get involved with, type of people your family interacts with. You got to have those avatars ready to go. If the person or a business opportunity does not fit your vision, you bail out just like Gary V did. I have a motto that I do not want to get into any type of business that I don't have first-hand knowledge of and I don't have a grasp of. The reason is I'm in a part of my life where I don't have the flexibility to go and venture into something new and take risks. So I only get into certain type of businesses that I know. There are certain things, certain type of strategies, certain frameworks, certain rules and regulations, a system that I know will work and help me make money. And it will also give me the confidence, my frameworks, my rules and regulations, my principles, they will give me the confidence to walk into this business and make money. There are certain type of people you can trust, certain type of people you cannot trust. There are some services you use on a regular basis versus the others. For example, we all have a barber that we get our cuts from. I don't even have to explain anything to my barber. He knows exactly what I want to get. But everywhere else, I'm taking unnecessary risk. When I buy food, I got a few spots. When I need something done, I have certain people that I like to deal with. When I want to get a car, I only go to certain people I know. I don't even bargain or waste time. I just show up, sign a few papers and drive off. There are certain type of people that I can fully trust and there are certain type of people that I don't trust. As an entrepreneur and a businessman, you gotta have some strategies, some repeatable processes. Through my knowledge and my experience, I have created a system. I have certain strategies, certain frameworks that I believe in and they give me confidence. Your knowledge and your experience help you design a system, certain strategies, form business processes and business frameworks. These are certain cheat codes that you have applied before. You know the result that you will get after you apply or utilize these strategies or frameworks. So they give you the confidence to do anything in life because you know all you have to do is copy, paste, or just implement your strategies, your frameworks, and you will get XYZ result. You gain the confidence. You know the certain outcomes of a situation once you apply your knowledge and your strategies. For example, I can go to any tech conference and walk around very confidently. I can make the connections. I know how to navigate through a conference because I know the frameworks of socialization. I can talk to people. I know how to mingle. I know how to make friends. I can go to any type of a hood like Brownsville, Brooklyn or dark alleys of New Orleans and I can walk through the streets confidently. I would not have any issues. I would not face any consequences. I will not get attacked because I have done it before. I will not get in trouble because I know the protocols and frameworks of being in the hood. I know how to operate. I have certain attitude. I have certain attributes. I have an avatar that I can access from a vault of experience. But there are certain situations where your systems and frameworks don't work. So that's why you have to keep learning. If you have had experience and you have prior knowledge, or you stumble upon the systems and frameworks that were created by others, you will be able to survive anywhere and face anything. You could figure out and point out the outcome of certain situations once you have the systems in place. You will know the do's and don'ts. Sometimes you have all the information, but you don't have systems, or you have never implemented anything pertaining to that information or system. There's a high chance that you will lose without a system. For example, at every sale or marketing job, you will get trained and you will do markup training. It will be a whole different ball game when you sit in front of a real customer. You can do all the trainings you want, but once you get in front of a real customer, it's going to be a different ball game. Sometimes you have all the systems and frameworks and knowledge, but sometimes you just don't want to be in the situation. For example, if you practice the art of fighting, you still don't want to get into fights or be in life or death situations. I know how to day trade. I can read charts. I can do technical analysis. And sometimes I'm really good at it. But I have lost enormous amount of money before. So I don't day trade anymore. I think it has so many negative side effects. And I love poker. I don't want to be in the casino gambling my life away. There are certain type of things I like to do. Certain type of situations I like to get into. Certain type of people I like to work with. Certain type of businesses that I'm interested in. But not every opportunity is the same. Imagine working with someone who has a track record of backstabbing and deceiving and stealing. After a while, you are able to differentiate, recognize, point out people and opportunities. Most people have similar traits and attributes. You just have to pick up on little tells 
and you will know what type of person you're dealing with. Business opportunities have traits and patterns which are similar. You just have to recognize them and point out. Practice makes perfect. So you will be able to do this easily because of the avatars that you have created, the frameworks you have worked on, the system you have in place. Once you have created these avatars with different traits, different properties, certain attributes, certain qualities, certain characteristics, certain features, you will see them and recognize them over and over again in your lifetime. Over time, you will get so good at it that you will start doing something called cherry picking. It has different meanings from compliance point of view. I'm only going to refer to it as pre-qualifying people, pre-qualifying business opportunities, and pre-qualifying leads to figure out and see if the opportunity fits the criteria and guidelines, the rules and regulations of our system. And if your system approves working with this type of a person, if your system approves to buy this property, if your system approves this business idea. When you go and apply for a credit card, they have an avatar of a person that they will approve of. Credit card companies, they have avatars of their perfect ideal customers that they will approve when you go and apply for a credit card. Someone who has consistent income, their debt and bills ratio is lower, their credit score is good or excellent. Credit card companies will tell you we are just going to pre-qualify you it is not going to hurt your credit. We just want to see if you have the qualities of a customer that we are looking for. Every time I'm traveling, I'm usually gone for months. I live in New York, but I'm always traveling. So sometimes when I'm in another country, my VPN service doesn't really clog. And sometimes I get rejected if I'm trying to open a bank account or if I'm trying to register a new domain name, or if I'm trying to create an account on Amazon, or Fiverr, or Upwork, or some affiliate program. American-based companies usually prevent outsiders from accessing their services. They are looking for certain type of customers. Over time, you will learn how to deal with certain types of people in certain ways, because there are frameworks and systems for everything. Let's say you meet someone who is interested in doing business with you. You have to pre-qualify them. The part of your brain which deals with logic, money, and business will not approve of this person. This person does not qualify and this person lacks certain qualities to do business with you. But the quadrant of your brain that deals with the feelings and emotions approves of this person to become your friend. Our brain is so sick. In actuality, these systems patterns are really built by our brain with information that we feed our brain. I will make another video that talks about different parts of your brain that deals with different things according to the information you feed your brain and the experiences you have had in life or the frameworks, the system you build does not approve of certain situations, certain people and opportunities. There are some people, they can become my friends. They can hang out with me. They can be part of my family. They can give me advice, but when it's time to implement it, I don't want them to be part of it. So by using systems and processes, you can cut out 99% of bullshit and say no to BS business opportunities, BS information, BS people. Your systems help you focus on what you want and they allow you to filter out the things you don't want, the things you don't want to do or you don't have to deal with. That's how as an entrepreneur, you will become clear in your vision. It's not about the things that you do. It's not about the ideas you work on. It is not about the opportunities you can grab, but it's really about what you can say no to. That will allow you to grow and conquer. Your choices will become clear. You will be able to choose quality rather than quantity. And that's why I think Gary V is very clear in his vision. He is a stand-up guy when it comes to his choices, his path, his vision. He knows that for his legacy, he wants to buy Jets, the New York Jets, the football team. He has dreamt of it. His vision is crystal clear. He does not want Patriots or Cowboys. He is very specific about his wants and his needs and his vision. And he loves it when he says something. He's willing to stick with his word because word is bond. And he will stick to it for like 30 years. He will wait patiently with discipline. 
but he will make sure that one day the headline of New York Post or Times will read, Finally, Gary V is the proud owner of New York Jets. He lives for moments like that. So when I say that he's close-minded, he's pessimistic, he is focused, no ifs and buts when it comes to his vision, his long-term goals. He wants Jets. That's why he's pessimistic about every other team out there. But he's optimistic about New York Jets. He is open-minded about life, about certain opportunities. When he goes to garage sales, he will buy Tom Brady's jersey. He will still buy Patriot sports cars if there's a deal on it. If someone offered him today a very nice deal on buying Cowboys team or Giants, I think he will still say no. I think he will not take those opportunities because he has set his sights on New York Jets. He is laser focused. He is resilient. His mind is fixed on certain things. After a while, your brain goes on automatic. Your subconscious makes you do things that will get you closer to your life goals and visions. His subconscious mind have been fed over and over again that Gary wants to buy New York Jets. So the brain takes all this information in and forms systems and processes and frameworks that will help Gary buy Jets over time. So when an Uber opportunity comes up, the brain tells the gut to act up. Brain signals the instinct to come forward and say no to a mere $25,000 deal that could have, should have, would have made Gary some money. Imagine being in the headlines of newspaper. Gary V and Travis sued for sexual harassment and work abuse and racism. Gary's brain told him to fuck off so quick because Gary is trying to reach different levels. He's chasing some other headlines. The headlines that will say, Finally, Gary V is the proud owner of New York Jets. His brain, his system, and his experiences ain't gonna let him get tangled with some fucking guy that breaks laws on seven continents and sexually harasses and discriminates against his employees and what not in real life. Sometimes you gotta stick with what you know best. Every time you go against your methods, your gut feelings, you will get scars. And you don't wanna get scars in business. You don't want to get scars like that where your image is tarnished forever. Gary is building a legacy. Everyone wants to work with Gary V. But how many people are really willing to work with Travis now? He got fired from his own company. Okay, resigned, whatever. But once you lose certain qualities and don't fit the rules and regulations, they will kick you out quick. Everyone's perspective is changed overnight. You can make shitloads of money, but still lose your dignity and have no respect. Your family doesn't respect you. Your peers, your clients, everyone's perspective has changed and no one really respects you as an entrepreneur. You have to have business ethics or you will lose. The only time you hear of Travis now is in the cautionary tales of the Silicon Valley. What not to do. I've had several experiences where my partners backstabbed me, stole from me, cheated me out of deals. It's part of life. But people like that do not get respect in life. They miss out. Because you know what? The frameworks they live by, sooner or later they will fuck someone close to them, even their family members, siblings, friends. They always get caught and get pointed out for being douchebags. As you grow knowledge, the way you think, the way you apply your frameworks, your principles, they become stronger as you go through life. Have you seen old people? They become very rigid and fixed on doing things a certain way. Because they have lived their life by certain set of rules and regulations, they will not change for anyone. Head of households across the globe get the last word on most of family's decisions. For example, my father. Although he's retired, he will get the last word. He is our ultimate decision maker. He has his own frameworks, rules and regulations. The way he extracts information by observing situations, only he can do that. Because of the information and experiences, he has fed his mind. His information, his systems, help him analyze situations and utilize frameworks and implement. Me and my brothers may analyze situations differently, but he gets the last word. His decisions are firm. He also possessed the dominance and the assertiveness, the boldness to implement his frameworks. Sometimes you gotta have that courage and confidence to force your decisions and frameworks on others or you have to apply them to certain situations. If a situation arises and the situation demands you to be in charge and take action, 
then all of your information and knowledge will come together to form an opinion and require you to apply your frameworks, implement your systems to make a decision. And sometimes you are the only person who can see through situations and you are the only person who can see the big picture. You must believe in the instincts to force your decision. Sometimes the outcome of situations will emerge. You will know exactly how something will play out because you have seen it before. Your rules, regulations, frameworks, systems, they help you make easier choices because most of the things and situations in life repeat themselves. If your frameworks are built on positive and optimistic information, positive beliefs, then you will only be positive and attract positivity. But if they are based on negative information, you will see and attract negativity. Your abilities to apply and utilize frameworks will get stronger. Person who commits fraud, person who doesn't play by the rule, person who likes to dig people around out of money and opportunities, that person is a trickster. That type of a person will only grow stronger in their evilness. And a person who's a positive thinker and always does the right thing will use their systems and frameworks to do good. One of my boys from back in the day, he used to say, always do the right thing. Just do the freaking right thing. If you were out at the restaurant, you're shocked. How much should we tip the waiter? He will be like, just do the right thing. So do each his own. If we were about to get in a fight, he would tell me, you know, just do the right thing. Get away. You don't want this trouble. What feels right to you? We all have frameworks for what is right and what is wrong. That's why one person's villain is other person's hero. It's our frameworks and systems that we apply and learn to extract information and analyze it according to our system, our rules, our regulations, and then differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. Just like my boy says, do the right thing. If you disrespect someone, then just apologize because that's the right thing to do. If you have committed a fraud or taken someone's money, just do the right thing. Nawal Ravi Khan gave a great example on his podcast that one of the entrepreneurs that he invested in was having issues with his company. Everyone thought he was going to bankrupt. He could have easily written everything off and call it a day. He didn't have to return any, any investor's money. And even Nawal said that he knew that the company would go down and he was ready to lose all of his investment. He had written it off. But the entrepreneur, he pivoted his company. He came back and returned everyone's money. And Nawal said to him that he was not expecting anything back. And he could have easily written everything off as a loss. The entrepreneur, he got offended. He said, I did not return your money for you. I returned this money because that's how I do things. I did it for my beliefs and to satisfy myself. That's the code I live by. That's the work ethic that I have. Some people are like straight up gangsters and G's when it comes to doing the right thing all the time. They don't care about what people think. They will always do the right thing and prevail. Their systems and principles are so strong that they do not allow themselves to deviate from the righteous path. They just do the right thing. So we as entrepreneurs, we have to do the right thing. Say no to people, say no to situations, say no to business opportunities. Build the process to do the right thing and say yes to only doing the right things. What is the right thing to do when you start a new business? You got to have your vision. You got to have a business plan. Who is going to be your paying customers? What type of products you got to sell? You got to know the pain points of your customers. You got to provide a real solution. You got to do all your due diligence. You got to plan everything and you got to do it right. So create a business plan, create a customer avatar, plan everything out and just do the right thing. Do your due diligence. Do what's right. I say no to opportunities all day because I only want to work with certain type of people. I only say yes to certain type of business opportunities. And that's how we usually work, right? We only do the right thing. It's not rocket science. We only go to the opportunities and the type of people that we like. But we got to have a system. We all have our own methods and styles of doing things. But just do the right thing when it requires you to make a decision in business. I don't care. Even if I don't have a dollar in my pocket, I will still say no to working with certain type of people, certain situations. I will deny certain industries. I will not do certain type of businesses. I don't need to be in a situation where my systems don't work and I will be weak. I don't need to deal with certain situations and businesses and people. I want to stay in my own domain where I have the dominance and power to make shit happen. So I can do the right thing. If you get into certain situations where you get the scars of bearing losses or your partners backstab you, every time you get into situations where you don't apply your frameworks, and system, you will lose. You will have your partners backstab you. You will bear losses. And taking an L like this is not easy. Recently, 
I was in certain type of situations where it kind of scarred me for life. I remember I was day trading one day and I lost like mad money. It was on January 6, 2021. When Trump supporters, they attacked the U.S. Capitol building. I was day trading that day and I was like fully immersed in cryptocurrency and trading. I had been up all night. I thought it was a million dollar day for me. I was using leverage about like 10x and I was trading three to four million dollars up and down, back and forth. It was crazy. It didn't matter. When the news broke out that the Capitol building was under attack, everything started tanking. The stock market, the crypto, everything. The state of emergency was declared. Everything tanked. And it was a huge hit for me personally. That situation literally like broke my back. I could not get off of my bed for the next several months. I was literally, I couldn't do anything. During that time, I get backstabbed by two business partners. Because, you know, during Corona, first of all, it was Corona. People didn't know how to fucking act. Greed level was high as hell. And it was predict unpredictable times. Everything was shutting down. And everything was shut down. There was so much uncertainty that everyone was like to each his own situation. And then on top of that, I'm trading and I lose so much money. I mean, everything just tanked as soon as the news broke. And you know what, to be honest, it was like a similar feeling to getting backstabbed over and over again. Situations like that leave scars and they deviate you from achieving your targets and your path of success. I think at the time, I did not understand the frameworks of how to stop myself from over trading and controlling my greed. Perhaps I didn't know those frameworks, so I did not have a system in place. I did not know that I was greedy. I had all the information on how to read the charts. I knew how to do the technical analysis, but I failed to control myself from over trading. So basically, I go in a hole for like a couple of months. I get backstabbed out of like in two of my businesses. And basically, those situations made me believe in the things that I already knew. It taught me a huge lesson that I need to learn to really, really stick to my systems. That's why now, like, I'm very certain, I'm very firm that if I cannot read a situation or cannot figure out a business opportunity, or if a person gives me negative vibes, I simply say no and move on. I don't need just like that in my life that will fuck up my vibes, that will deviate me from my success path. Over time, an entrepreneur goes through so many situations like that and they form systems and frameworks accordingly to the information that they have seen, observed, or absorbed. Most of the times, those frameworks are on automatic. Your subconscious brain makes rapid assessments and warns you. Have you ever noticed like you're around a bunch of people, but you get like negative vibes from someone? You get that negative vibe from some people, but not others? It is because your frameworks get activated. Your system is on. Your brain quadrants are at work to steer you out of situations that will not benefit you or that will end badly for you. You automatically know who's a BS artist, who's trying to get your money, which business is going to fail, and it is not going to work with certain type of people involved. It is not going to work with certain teams or piece of technology. But your brain is making all of these assessments and rejecting ideas, applying rules of law, switching between frameworks in a jiffy. It's just rapidly going very quickly, working through different type of situations. It jumps from one framework to another. You get so good at like different type of using like different type of frameworks that after a while you can differentiate between awesome sauce and recipe for disaster. That's why if you try to go up to like a successful entrepreneur with your awesome ideas, they will tell you no very quickly because their systems, they reject half-assed ideas and unprepared pitches all day long. A venture capitalist or these companies that are looking to fund your businesses, they will like freaking bug you. They will come after you. But as soon as you tell them, hey, you don't have any traction right now, monthly recurring revenue or annual recurring revenue is very low. These people will freaking just block you right away. They will not even talk to you. First, they will come after you, but they will stop talking to you once they know that you don't fit certain qualities. You don't have certain type of income coming in. So if you are unprepared, you are not going to be able to raise any type of funding. That's why so many people, they come up with that different ideas. When they go to investors, they reject them right out the window. But sometimes you will see the same investors invest in businesses that you think are professional. But it is not because they're dumb. It is because their system received more information than what you provided. Their systems approve of the business you think is professional, but they reject your awesome ideas and awesome business plans. It used to kill me whenever I used to get rejected by like venture capitalists, 
But now I understand why I was not getting the results I expected. I lacked a lot of fish. Now I'm more cautious, more experienced. I know how to say no. I reject opportunities. I'm optimistic about life, but very pessimistic, narrow-minded, close-minded, doubtful, cynical about deals and people when it comes to business and entrepreneurship and money. I don't trust easily. I have learned to think of all the things that will go wrong with the business opportunities or people at first. There is actually a framework. It's called pre-mortem. You have to visualize and imagine that you started a business but it failed. You have to imagine the reasons why a business would fail and the level of risk involved. Once you can figure out and pinpoint the problems, all the things that could go wrong, you just have to plan to avoid those problems by doing pre-mortem technique, by applying the pre-mortem framework. By doing this pre-mortem of a business opportunity, you will be able to get a better understanding of how to make it a success. You can apply this to your life even or your day-to-day -day tasks, projects at your work, school projects. Most entrepreneurs are pessimistic because they use similar frameworks to avoid certain business opportunities. But it's always a very quick decision. If you pay attention to the clips, Gary talking about the Uber deal, just notice how quickly he responds to what went down when he was invited to invest in Uber twice. He quickly assessed the situation and said, no, it's okay to miss out on Uber. It's okay to miss out on business opportunities. I would rather take an L where I missed out on an opportunity than to lose it all because of unethical business partners and businesses that won't make money. It's not always about the money or opportunities. There are plenty of those around. Once you say no to an opportunity, you don't really think about them. Maybe one day in a video or a podcast, you can dread the opportunities that you missed out in life. Just like Gary Vee, shoulda, coulda, woulda, whatever. Whether Uber came along or not, Gary is still going to buy New York Jets. His plan, his vision is not changed. He is still focused. His legacy is being built. And it's a great one. But what is the legacy of Travis? A guy built a loss leader business and got fired from his own company due to harassment charges and breaking the loss. Once Gary buys New York Jets, missing out on Uber is not going to matter. And his legacy is still intact. It's okay to miss out on opportunity, especially if your system, your criteria, your brain denies it or denies people. Travis and Gary can be friends forever, but they don't have to work together. They don't have to do business together. I have many friends and people I know, people who want to invest with me. I have this millionaire who checks in with me every once in a while and asks about any opportunities that, that we can work on together. I know this person has very strict frameworks. I have not brought them any opportunities as of yet. It's been over 10 years that we have been keeping in touch. I have not needed their investment and I haven't come across anything, something that will wow them, a business proposition that will qualify and pass their frameworks. I have learned to be patient and wait for the right moment. I know it's right around the corner. As soon as I have a business opportunity, I will go get those millions of dollars. We get into distasteful situations sometimes because we lack patience. As an entrepreneur, we need to be patient and learn to say no and reject frequently. And your systems, your frameworks, they help you avoid those type of situations. They help you. They give you more confidence to reject and say no to people and say no to opportunities. Because not every opportunity and every person is supposed to be in business with you. One of my best friends, he's a very cocky bastard, really pushed me into a business venture. Guess what? We are not friends anymore. Another one of my friends, he's a very smart guy. Oh, he also has like frameworks that he works with. We sat down one day and we ran personality tests. We are great friends, but we ran this thing called Hexaco test, where you learn how a person is in different quadrants, different parts of their life. It tells you like work-related, money-related, greediness levels, empathy levels, things of that sort. You can figure out what type of person you're dealing with. And we figured that we are good friends, but we are not a great fit when it comes to doing business together. I run this process very often now to figure out people when I'm hiring, firing, going into business and whatnot. People will always surprise you. You got to give benefit of doubt to everyone in life, but in business, everyone's a suspect. You got to interview and interrogate. Once I hired like a former founder of a large company, apparently he was fired from his company and he was in a non-compete agreement for a period of time. But he came on board as a consultant. I got the information I needed, but I found out that this person was fired because he was admitted into the psych ward. If you don't pay attention to important parts of your life 
and forget to apply your systems and frameworks to people's situations and opportunities, you will come out as a loser. You gotta pay attention to your gut feelings. It's your mind telling you that Ali, all the information you have fed me over the years, it has helped me to analyze the situation which is presented in front of you right now. You need to get the fuck out of here. Your mind literally tells your gut, hey gut, act up, something is not right. Pay attention to your gut feelings. They consist of all the knowledge and the strategies and the systems. They're trying to talk to you. It's like all your experiences come together in a form of soldiers to protect you from imminent danger, keeping you from getting into situations that are not right. Most of the times these feelings are right. But you got to be optimistic in life and pessimistic when it comes to money and business. Do charity as much as you can. There's this guy, uh, Mr. Sheikh. I like his motto. He says, give more, make more. And that's actually one of the principles that I live by. Because even the religions, they tell you that, hey, give more, make more. So when it comes to money that needs to be donated, you got to be optimistic. Give as much as you can. But when it comes to opportunities and business opportunities, you got to be careful. Trust your family members, friends, help them whenever you can. You have to split people and opportunities in different parts of your system. For example, one of my friends came to me with a business proposition. I sat down, we went over everything. We sat down and we went over everything. And we came to a conclusion that my friend... He qualified perfectly to be my friend, my boy. But according to the systems that I have, this person does not qualify to be my business partner. He does not fit the profile or an avatar of a person that I would do business with. He fit another criteria. He could be a killer salesman for me. He could become my employee. But he cannot be on the same level as me. We cannot share equity. We cannot share control. We cannot do business together. And I think it's okay to tell your loved ones and your best friends that you can do business together rather than testing each other out. I never test anyone. I never test their loyalty. I never test people's feelings about me. I never test their intentions. I give benefit of doubt to everyone. If I suspect someone of something, I just create distance. Like if we are out hanging out, or I'm at a conference, I get a vibe from someone, and I think that person is giving me the negative vibes, I'm just not going to interact and cater to them. These are the lessons I have learned through painful experiences, from the mind abuse, from being deceived and backstabbed, from losing lots of dineros. You can either learn these lessons by reading books or gain knowledge by shadowing other successful people. Or simply, life will teach you in other ways. But remember, failures and opportunities... The missed opportunities, they're not going to take you away from your path. They only get you closer to your goals. Because what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. You have to put in the hours though. You have to sit through dinners and debates and negotiations. You got to take the BS meetings, taking people out to eat. It takes a long time for you to come up with your systems, your frameworks, your logics, your processes, your rules and regulations, your principles in business. Just keep sharpening your skills. Put in the hours, build frameworks, and in time, the patterns of success will emerge. You will start seeing opportunities that other people miss. Just remember, if a person, situation, or a business opportunity does not qualify your system and framework, just walk away. Don't do it. Keep learning. Subscribe, share, like, comment, and visit OneMinuteSchool.com. Get years of experience, knowledge, education, and strategies in one minute. I, I gotta go. Let's see you in a minute.